think that we probably don't have a ton of stuff to cover, so maybe this will be a shorter meeting, but uh, welcome everybody. And Sarah, I think you sent me something that I didn't get to. I'm sorry, I got really busy the last couple of days. Sorry. Uh, but um, let's, uh, let's, let's get started. Um, let's see, in between all of it, I of course lost the uh between google's bad babysitting i of course lost the agenda there we go okay so um pretty simple agenda items right uh uh um uh, updates on social media efforts updates on water meters and water use efforts and then sarah you sent something about a um uh, a grant uh right um why don't you go first, Sarah? And uh, now, now, do we need to? Can we approve? Do we have to approve the meetings at the, fir at the minutes of the first, uh, Jake? Or can we do that at the end? Or? Uh, typically, we do it at the end. We can do it at okay. the beginning. Whatever works for you. Okay, I'll leave it till the end. That's that's interesting. Other groups I meet with, that's always first. So that's what I always think about first. But Sarah, why don't we just have you go, and you can give us updates on social media efforts, and then tell us about this grant that you uh, were talking about that I'm sorry I did not get to. Okay. So last time we had talked about um, putting, trying to invite people to share their stories about how they're seeking refuge outdoors uh, this year in particular um, and what that might look like. So I have put together a post. Oh, is, started. oh there you are. My video started just all of a sudden to work. You just had to complain to it enough, and then it was like, fine, fine, I'll. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that should, that's set to post tomorrow afternoon. Um, I don't know. It has a Google form embedded, and I did it in English and Spanish. I mean, Google Translate version of Spanish, but um, so there's a Google form for you know, inviting people to share a little story about what they've been doing that has helped or whatever. Um, invite them to send a picture if they want. So if anything comes through with that, which I hope at least we get a few stories that we can use, um, I think that would be helpful just to kind of do a resident highlight um, and how they're doing or outside. So um, that will post tomorrow. Feel free, all of you, to um, share a story that way. Um, and then I've also uh, put together a post. I'm not quite finished with it, but I'm almost finished about um, Darren's uh, xeriscaping that he just installed in his front yard. Um, so that's another one that I can uh, put in for next week um, while we're waiting for some stories to come in. I can share a few of my stories. They're not particularly pretty, <laughs> but if we're, <laughs> if we're you know trying to you know get people to get the idea of how how this works, I can share the, a few of those. But yeah, so please feel free to share um, any of your stories, um, and then we'll put something together and and, and do those highlights. Um, <clears throat> last week, you too, Jake. I bet you get outside once in a while. I do. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> We were talking before about his outdoorsy, you know, plan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good, good. I, I had a feeling. Yeah. Yep. So looking for one from you, Jake. Okay. Uh, um, and then last week there was one post that went out about the lawnmower exchange um, or discount codes that through the state's program for um, the Department or Division of Air Quality. Um, so... That post went out last week, and then, yeah, so one's posting tomorrow. I've got another one almost ready to go out next week, and then hopefully we get some more stories so that we could just kind of keep featuring um, Orem outside. So that's on the social media front. Um, as far as the grant uh, application, uh, I indicated in the email to Heidi and Darren that um, there were, so Kenna Matthews of the city of Orem, she um, 
we'll periodically forward uh, emails about various grants that might be applicable to our committee. And I weeded out a few of them where the deadline, we wouldn't even be able to make the deadline. Um, and then there was one that was open-ended. Um, and then she just sent another one today that I'll take a look at. Um, I have never applied for a grant. Um, I know that our committee has participated in some way. They're writing a letter of recommendation for grants that the city has written. Um, so I don't know exactly all the process and, and how we would do that officially uh, through the city. But um, the one grant, it was fairly open. Um, and so the idea that I pitched, and I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I can just kind of do a quick pitch right now, um, was if the city should decide to put perhaps solar panels on the new library addition, uh, auditorium and or the fitness center, um, the idea was to maybe have a like an education station inside the library, like a kind of a panel, a, a section of the library that has um, education displays that perhaps change quarterly. Maybe there's a, a section on, um, well, the initial part would be to connect the solar panels to an internal real-time display of how much um, energy is being generated by the solar panels, um, what that translates to in dollars, um, how that compares to fossil fuels, what that translates to perhaps, you know, this is the equivalent of planting so many trees or taking so many cars off the road. That's a common uh, metric that is used. Um, and so, and then, you know, for all ages, I think it would be interesting to see, you know, how much how do solar panels work? How does electricity work? Um, just kind of an education station talking about, you know, this very tangible project on this new building, again, with the rebranding, it could be kind of an interesting um, section that again, could be updated and changed quarterly with new educational information. Um, and perhaps through that uh, avenue, we could post about upcoming service projects or tree planting that the city's going to do when we can get together in person again um, and plan some activities outdoor activities perhaps we could post you know whatever the quarterly activity that we're planning on doing next there um, but then we can have kind of a regular um, opportunity to engage with the public of all ages another part that i threw in there that could be fun for younger ages is having a a section of the floor be kinetic flooring that when you walk on it or jump on it or dance on it um, that there could be a real-time display um, shown that kids could see how much energy they're creating by their you know activity um, that makes it more of a multi-sensory display and educational experience and also it reinforces this idea of kind of a cooperative or um, communal educational experience where it's not just how much energy I've created, but it's how much energy we've created as a community. So I thought that um, that could be kind of a, I, again, I haven't priced it out. I don't know if the city is planning on doing solar panels, but I think that that might have been an option. I know that the city has bought into um, some uh, panels on the solar farm. And so I think that could be an option that they're thinking about. And so, yeah, that was kind of my thought about getting a grant to fund that interactive education station. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know yeah. if the city is planning on solar panels there, but um, I can certainly look into it for you guys. Okay. That would be great. Um, and again, you know, if it's something where they would be interested in looking at a more formal presentation of how, you know, what the idea is. I could get started working on that. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about this particular grant, it's there wasn't a, a deadline. It was just kind of ongoing. They're 
um, and various sizes of grants. But um, so the gr just to be clear, the grant would be for the education station. Correct. Right? It would not be for okay. the solar panels. Right. Cool. No, it's not enough for that. Right. But right. it would. I think it would be enough to help boost this kind of education station. Um, and I'm if these new facilities don't have won't have solar panels, maybe I can see if there's any other facilities that do or that will um, right. and see what would be possible there. Yeah, and see if there would be a way to connect those so that it, it really brings that concept to life. And it's, you know, STEM education, which is big. Um, yeah. And again, I think that it would be interesting for all age groups. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. So anyway. Cool. I love I love your I love your creativity, Sarah, and 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 um, I really like that we're combining it with. This is something we haven't done much as a committee yet, but to think more long term, right? Um, uh, oh, Heidi has something to say. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow, that's cool. Grew up in a nuclear power plant, and they had a whole education thing for this sort of thing. It was always fun to visit. Great way to educate kids on where energy come from, how it works. Yeah, thank you, Heidi. Um, and uh, you know, getting in sort of, uh, it seems like we're always trying to contribute to projects after they get uh, planned and, and going. And so, no, it happens all the time. <laughs> happens all the time. Yeah, it's like, oh, we have this great idea, and they're like, uh, yeah, too bad you didn't tell us two years ago. So this is a nice opportunity for us to kind of start something from the ground floor. Yeah, yeah, this is this is this is great. A little more long term thinking, which, you know, it's only natural that as we've <laughs> as sort of as we've kind of gotten to know the rhythms and the cycles of the city that it's taken us a while to figure all this out. So that that's this is great. Um, uh, so uh, regarding uh, to do's. Uh, it sounds like Jake, you're willing to sort of learn about uh, um, whether they have uh, solar or planning on solar at some of these things and, yep. and, and inform us. Okay, thank yep. you. Appreciate that. And um, how, how much is this grant for again, Sarah? What's the? Um, I will have to give that to you. I, I mean, okay. I could go search search for it right now. And no, no, that's okay. Uh, but. Um, uh, maybe a few thousand dollars or something. Yeah, like maybe it was like five thousand. And again, yeah. I don't know. I haven't priced this out um, okay. how much it would cost, but I think that the amount of the possible grant um, could it, fit somewhat the project. Okay. Is it this one the support for efforts to transition to clean energy, the fighter fund? Um, is that in the email that I sent you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's probably it then. Yeah, this yeah, is the typically averages five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's range from five hundred dollars to fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, see, it seems like for five thousand dollars, you could probably set up a, a a little. It'd be fun, an educational station. I love the word. I love that phrase, it's educational station. Um, it is the, I wonder if there's a model around that we could think about. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm happy to go visit wherever Heidi grew up and, and see the. <laughs> but is is there a, <laughs> is there something you had in mind, Sarah, that you were kind of modeling off of? Uh, Nothing I'm specific that I'm thinking of, but you know, whenever we go visit places and there's kind of a hands-on, real-time display of how things work or whatever, I just. I, I can't think of anything specifically that has done this. Yeah. I imagine that there are some things out there like this. Yeah. Um, I wonder, I wonder, is this something, I mean, it sounds like this is something where we could use a consultant of some kind, right? Somebody who's actually tried to do something like this before. I wonder if, um, I wonder if we looked around who we would be able to find. I mean, as I think, that my thoughts first run to, you know, cool education stations are at the Clark Planetarium or the, um, uh, or the uh, Natural, History Museum? Natural History Museum. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. yeah. Or the, um, or the, um, boy, does that other museum even exist? In, I don't have young kids anymore, so yeah. Um, right. Maybe Thanksgiving Point at the. Yeah, yeah. A good one. You know? I just, I, I guess, I'm just wondering if these folks have, they might have outreach kinds of um, things in their missions, and I wonder if we reached out to them, if they would, um, if they would be willing to you know, give us some ideas and suggestions and advice and things like that. Yeah. So, um, uh, so step one, Jake can get back to us, but let's say even if they aren't doing, I mean, if, even if they aren't doing any kind of solar, you still had kind of an idea here, right? For kinetic energy or something like that. So would it be appropriate to start reaching out now? Uh, or, I mean, what's the sequence of events here as you see it, Sarah? Should we? Um, I don't, I mean, Jake, who, who would we, like, who would we work with if this were to take steps um, forward? Like, who's the person we would work with? It really, it depends on, uh, so if there is an existing solar uh, we'll probably work with the wherever that is. Uh, okay. If it's going to be on one of these new buildings that the city is making, we'll probably work with. Uh, I have no idea. I know there's a lot of people working on these projects, so I. But I, I'd figure that out as part of that research. Who we would work with. Uh, I don't have an answer yet. Sorry. So, so probably the the scarcest resource here is probably space, right? I mean, as far as the city's concerned, the city's probably, if we come in with $10,000 and say, hey, we want to set up an education station, I mean, my guess is they would, they would generally say, fine, as long as they have space, right? So I, I agree. I mean, I was just kind of imagining, I mean, outside of the kinetic flooring space, that it's just kind of a part of the wall in the library. I would think mm -hmm. there would be some room, especially in the new addition. Uh, so the new addition is going to be a concert hall. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if okay. that would really but be a good spot. If but they, yeah. If they move some of their um, art from the library where the existing wall space where yeah. they have art and that moves into the concert hall portion, yeah. then that opens up for potential space in the main part of the library where a part of the wall could be taken up yeah like there, there's but. certainly something that could be done there uh, okay. but we would we would definitely need to figure out what uh, what is possible so do you recommend we reach out to the library and just kind of chat with them about it and see how they feel about it um I feel like the first step is figure out uh, what existing resources we have okay. and then once we figure that out then we say okay then one of these three or four routes is probably going to be the most appropriate and then uh, make plans to go down those routes and see what's possible. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Jake. We will um, await hearing back from you on this then. Okay. Uh, great. Anything else, Sarah? Nope. Okay. Um, so, uh, for my part, uh, water, uh, I got in touch with the water folks who came and visited us last January, February and said, Hey, how's that a smart meter installation going? And they said, well, it's not <laughs> because, uh, COVID the re you, you have to have two people within a couple of feet of each other to install these smart meters. And so they have not made much progress. Um, they, they reassured me that it's still very much in the plans that we, as the, they have not forgotten about us, that we will be one of the first served uh, so that we can still pilot the software and, uh, or the app and um, all that kind of stuff. So, that's, that's sort of, I already gave that report by email, but I thought I'd refresh your memories about what it was that we were doing there. I also asked for data on large water users in Orem, 
and they said that they don't really release that data. And uh, they suggested I just use Google Maps, <laughs> which I thought was fun, to uh, my Google babysitter thing continues to kind of figure out because the big water users are going to be the same people with water property, right? <laughs> so they said, you know, if somebody's using a lot of water, it's because they've got a lot of outdoor stuff. So just look on Google Maps and identify the biggest properties in Orem. You've identified the biggest water users. I thought, okay, <laughs> fair enough. That's a, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a useful way forward. Um, but I haven't really done anything about it because yeah, I don't know. Still in this weird COVID limbo, aren't we? And um, I just have been having trouble with the motivation again. Um, anyway, uh, it seems like a nice next step might be for me to actually do that, sit down and look at this as being helpful to me, the fact that we're having this little meeting, uh, keeping me accountable here. To actually sit down and look at the um, Google Maps and identify some likely large water users and just sort of approach them on a friendly conversational basis of saying, hey, what are you guys doing to conserve water, right? And, um, you know, if somebody impresses me, well, first of all, I'll gather a few stories I think just the fact of asking them might be might be a little bit of motivation to somebody to, to think about this. Um, but uh, I, I think the ultimate idea here, my kind of ultimate idea is that is kind of peer pressure works. And so if we could find one or two places that are actually taking some good steps, then we can kind of circulate that information. We're like, hey, look at this entity. Look at look at this business. Look at this whatever look at what they're doing on water conservation um uh those are my thoughts i welcome any feedback to those thoughts um can i provide some insight that i think might help you a little bit um so i often i've had recently uh, a couple of phone calls with uh some a few landlords in uh the city who own a few fourplexes and whatnot. Um, and they're, they, the conversation, I've had a couple of conversations that were very similar and they essentially went something like this. The landlord calls in and says, is there any way that I can stop having a really high water bill? Because water's really expensive and I really want to make the, my front yard look really good on this fourplex. I don't want to turn it into something that's going to fall apart. Um, what can I do to make, to reduce my water usage? Um, and I often point them to the zero escaping ordinance that we have, uh, in, in the city. Um, so I think it, it uh, the route that, that you're proposing would be very effective on the business commercial side. Um, but there, they, I believe from at least the last two weeks of conversations I've had with, with a f these few residents, uh, is that it would be really good if we could somehow get the word out that a little bit more for the for uh, the the fourplexes and the higher density developments that hey you could save money on on water if you uh, switch to zero escaping um, or or something like that I don't know how if that would is I don't know how helpful the, my comments were but I, I hope that yeah, no, that would that's help you. That's 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 awesome. That's uh, that's really good to know that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure people are interested in this because yeah, water rates are going up, and it's the time of year when everybody's thinking about it. So uh, that's good to know that people are actually calling and saying, "Hey, what ideas do you have?" Right? That mm -hmm. seems like an opening for us. We could we could uh, do a better job of getting some ideas out there. And and yeah, I don't just mean commercial. I yeah, I that's a great point i hadn't really thought about that um uh uh i hadn't really thought about the you know the apartment building kind of issue uh there, there are people or people with multiple rental properties or whatever that need to worry about that so mm -hmm. um uh, uh um, we are almost out of time okay uh, so we can 
Uh, I'll add that to the post about Darren's front yard, his there escaping. Oh. I'll add a little like link to the city, the new city code that also has, I believe, a list of like water wise plants that work well. So that if people are like, okay, that looks great, but now what, where do I go? Um, I'll try to put a link in there so that they can go directly to, to that resource. And right. we can have several of those posts if we can get some more of those every time we feature somebody doing beautiful water wise landscaping and we'll direct them back to the, those resources so that they can. Yeah. You know. Heidi mentions the resource about, uh, you know, how much to water the recommendation uh, and, and she forgets what it is. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. I know what you're talking about, Heidi, and I don't have it on the tip of my tongue, especially since now I'm feeling like we need to wrap up because we might have a time limit here. <laughs> I apologize but, for that. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, if we could, Sarah, you know, maybe think about, yeah, that's that's a great idea, Sarah, is, is promoting um, some of these resources and, yeah, helping people understand, hey, you can – you can pull out part of your lawn, <laughs> right? <laughs> Replace it, uh, zero escape it a little bit. Um, I think that's great. How do they react, Jake, when you mention, uh, you know, hey, you can pull out part of your lawn? Do they, do they seem to think that's a good idea. Yeah, most of them are very, very appreciative of that. Uh, most of these landlords, their water bills are upwards of uh, $1,200 um, a month. And they're they're really really happy that they have an option uh, for that. Is that, is that, that Cheryl? Is Cheryl. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi, Cheryl. Just so you know, she just wanted to visit us. To just so you know. We did. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Cool. See ya. Thank you. Have yeah. a good weekend. Okay. And Heidi mentioned the landlord could also replace the lawn with a playground, right? Or, or uh, yeah, a, a, a simple, right? A, 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 yeah, simple area for children in some fashion. Okay, well, those are those are awesome. So um, we have all ideas to work on, and um, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Unless there's more people want to say. Okay, um, let's um, let's do. Uh, let me call for, is there a motion to approve our minutes from last time? I'm actually looking at them right now. So I will, uh, let's see, these are from our meeting on uh, June 4th. Uh, I, I mo motion to approve the main minutes of our okay. meeting on June 4th. And I will second that to save Heidi's voice, uh, though maybe she's t typing something now that I missed. And, um, uh, and, uh, everybody in favor? Aye. Yeah. And Heidi. Aye. Okay. Minutes have been approved. Okay. And, um, now we just need, uh, to adjourn and I would motion adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you.